It is sad that a small minority of professing Christians today appear to simply view their God as terrifying. But more tragically, countless non-believers appear to have no fear of their Creator at all. In our fallen age, it is terrible that some people who should feel safe do not, while many people who ought to be terrified do not. Even if this tragedy will eventually be resolved, those of us who have found safety in Jesus want to contribute whenever we can by providing true emotional support or the proper amount of suffering. Perhaps reclaiming a sometimes ignored aspect of God, namely His grandeur, could aid in our efforts to unsettle sinners and resettle real saints. The message from Our Lady Queen of Peace today will help you with that. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button to get notified of our latest videos. Each of your kind support means a lot to us. This is the message Lord Jesus loves you and has high expectations for you. Dear children, do not let anything or anyone sway you from the direction I have indicated for you. Be not disheartened. The Lord needs you because you are living during the peak of the great spiritual conflict. The goal of the enemy's strategy is to divert you from the truth. They will criticize the Eucharist in an effort to demoralize you and sway you from the truth. Pay attention, the Eucharist contains my Jesus, body, blood, soul and divinity. Do not let the devil trick you or rob your hearts of this unchangeable truth. Whatever occurs, stick to the teachings of the Church of my Jesus, authentic magisterium, in the name of the Most Holy Trinity, I bring you this message today. I appreciate you letting me bring you together once more. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I bless you, Amen. Be at peace. The most important is we have to be aware of God's majesty. The world's greatest deliverance up until Calvary is when Scripture makes its first unequivocal mention of God and all His magnificence. Egypt's ruler finally conceded and released the Jews after ten horrifying plagues then. However, he had a change of heart prepared his chariot and followed God's people into the wilderness, where they were encountered with their backs to the sea and no apparent place to run. God then divided the sea to the amazement of both Israel and Egypt, as well as everyone who would hear the story. For thousands of years, God threw the waters back onto the Egyptians to their ruin, when they followed the Israelites through the area on dry ground. Exodus 14 30-31, Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord, and in his servant Moses. The word majesty that was chosen speaks a lot about the worshippers. While God's enemies run away in terror, his supporters extol his glory. God told Moses that he would make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing of all that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. Exodus 9 4 After that, when the Lord foretold the tenth and last plague, he says, But not a dog shall growl against any of the people of Israel, either man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Exodus 11:7. Moses would also argue for this distinction in the months to come, while pleading for the people before God on Mount Sinai. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us, so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? Exodus 33:16. until the angel of God or the pillar of fire and cloud turned on them to their dismay in Exodus 14, the Egyptians were the instigators tracking down Israel in the desert and charging into the sea after God's people. The same is true of Isaiah's earliest prophecy. He mentions individuals who are opposed to God three times, in a short period of time and who will soon try to flee from before the terror of the Lord, and from the splendor of His Majesty. Isaiah 2 10 19 21, If those who have placed themselves against them would only open their eyes and see, the one who is majestic in holiness to his prophet would be a threat, if not scary. Even while his enemies will see this majesty as overwhelming and terrible. Those he is protecting are comforted and reassured by it. Israel, who is on God's side and asking for his assistance and protection, 
hears Moses say that God would use his power for their benefit. Deuteronomy 33:26. There is none like God, O Yeshurun, who rides through the heavens to your help, through the skies in his majesty. The ones who view their anointed monarch as majestic are the king's own people, those who recognize him as their sovereign and who identify as his subjects. The word majesty conjures feelings of awe in his redemption. What about the few proclaimed saints of today who appear to simply view their God as terrifying? What about the numerous atheists who don't seem to have any fear of God? Time will tell for both. The disbelieving Egyptians didn't show any signs of terror until the pillar of fire suddenly turned and pounced on them. They then went into a panic. All of those who choose to rebel against the mighty God will experience this soon they'll feel fear then, but we conclude with good news for his saints, who claim the name of Christ, but nonetheless struggle with what seems like uncontrollable dread rather than all when they think of God Almighty. A holy dread of his size and strength does not conflict with the holy awe of worshipping his majesty. In actuality, such holy dread produces holy awe. Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord employed against the Egyptians, so the people were afraid of the Lord. The Bible's Exodus 14 concludes however, because they were aware that they were part of his covenant people, this dread did not result in panic, but rather in faith. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Exodus 14:31. Exodus 15, starts off with praise we should surely be afraid of ever turning away from, and fleeing from a God of such majesty once we have a glimpse of the greatness strength and beauty of his majesty. And it is this holy fear that we do not strive to put away, but rather to follow as it leads to trust which leans on him, receives his amazing supply of peace in Christ, and takes pleasure in his majestic, ultimate protection against all enemies.